Hey, what's up, everybody? I want to uh, look at the game uh, from round six in the Singfield Cup between Levon Aronian and Wesley So. <clears throat> this game started off as the um, Ragos in defense, which takes place after Bishop B4 here. Yeah. And popular today is the line Bishop G5. And white, excuse me, black immediately responds with the move h6. Um, h6 is an important move, um, putting the question to the bishop on g5 right away because um, black plans to, excuse me, white wants to um, exploit the pin. Notice that the bishop on b4 does not block the pin of the bishop on g5 um, on the knight. So white, if allowed, would play moves like c takes d5 for instance e takes d5 and like queen b3 where uh, black would then be forced to basically part with the bishop knight c6 uh, is playable but uh, it's not not too good here so for instance knight c6 e3 castle and let's say bishop d3. There's a lot of pressure on this d5 pawn, especially after bishop e6 and then white castles and gets out of the pin. So then this bishop either can take here or try to go back uh, here to d6. So for instance, after bishop d6, White just increases uh, the pressure on the queen side and this d pawn. So c takes d5 is a major threat there. Another idea instead of queen b3, knight c6 is just simply bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, castle, and then bishop takes f6 is possible. And if queen takes f6, queen c7, which is not too bad for black. Um, black can get, you know, some activity um, for the pawn. But uh, in the long run, if white can, um, you know, uh, withstand black's early barrage of activity, <coughs> it should stand well. But instead of even going into that line... Um, White can just play solid with e3 and basically just maintaining pressure in the position. And playing a position like that where he stands better. So this is one of the reasons why h6 is is played so early here because of the threat of c takes uh, d5 in this, this uh, pin here. So h6, <clears throat> bishop takes, queen takes. And queen a4 check is a popular line as it forces the knight to c6. And a big deal here is block it blocks the c pawn uh, here. So this c pawn is not able to fight uh, for the center. And this kind of limits the scope of black's uh, possibilities. And here black usually plays <coughs> for the move e5 here since it's... Practically impossible for him to challenge the center with c5. So e3 from Aronian, castles from Wesley, bishop e2. This is all well known and stuff. D takes c4. Castle. And now bishop takes c3 from Wesley, which um, might have been premature. Um, I think. More to the point, a better move is bishop d7, threatening um, <clears throat> moves like knight d4 down the road. So, for instance, bishop d7, bishop takes c4, and then queen g6. And queen g6 actually threatens knight d4 here. For instance, if he does knight takes d4 now, then simply queen takes b4. But 
after queen g6, right? This is important because now the knight can't be captured because knight takes f3 will entail a pin on the king here. So, for instance, if black can move again, he will play knight takes d4. And if he plays queen takes b4, now it's knight takes f3. And notice in this line with the queen here, instead of here, this pawn can now, oh, excuse me, this pawn cannot capture this knight now. So, black would be winning in that variation. Thus, queen g6. So, of course, not, um, after queen g6, to defend against that, white plays a move like queen d1, bishop d6, bishop d3, f5, a3, rook a d8, this is a simple line of course, and then uh, e4. And e4 is important there because black would like to play e5. So after e4, queen f7 for example, then e5 shutting down black side there, then bishop e7. And the game is, um, you know, white has a little bit more space, but the game is definitely uh, still up for grabs. So back to the game, um, bishop takes c3 was played, I think it's a bit premature, b takes c3, bishop d7, and now he just moves the queen out of the, out of the way, rook a c8, rook a d1, and now rook f d8. So. Black here with this move, uh, rook fd8, he's, he's protecting this bishop and uh, preparing to move e5. In this position right here, notice the bishop is just unprotected. So, and the rook is here on d1, so if e5, he could just take and then the bishop wouldn't be protected. Also, the, uh, this, this idea of rook ad1 is fine. Uh, this position is similar to a Shigorin's defense. And White's plan usually is to remove this knight at some point and play moves like f3 and e4, <clears throat> sometimes even f4, and gradually um, push this uh, pawn preponderance in the center. A better place for this rook might be here on b1 on this open file and then move this rook to d1 instead. So, for example, um, again, let's give white some additional moves. Bishop d3, you know, correcting. Bring that rook to b1. Let's give him another move. Again, I'm just giving white some moves. Bishop e4, rook fd1, knight e5, for instance, <clears throat> with the idea of attacking uh, the queen side. And so now... For instance, give black some moves now, bishop e8, and, you know, with this kind of idea in mind. But I just want to show you that I think the rooks would be better placed in this this form. It gives black a little bit, excuse me, white, a little bit more, op, you know, a little bit more possibilities of playing on the queen side and the center. Whereas... Rook AD1 pretty much signals that white is just going to play in the center exclusively. So rook FD8 was played. There it is, knight D2. So white is planning to play in the center, as I said. Now, let me just go back before knight D2 to show you black's idea after rook FD8. So if black can move again, his plan is pretty straightforward. E5, like I said, with the knight on C6, it's really hard to break the center because this this uh, pawn is back here. So you basically have to use the E5 pawn. Knight E7. And here it's good for black if he can get in E5 because white central pawns um, become bogged down. So for instance, after knight E7, knight D2, and then C6. Just putting pressure 
on the uh, white center, making it a liability. And notice it's hard. Um, you know, the position of the queen is difficult because the rook is right here, ready to just take. And then say knight e4, queen g6, d6, and then knight d5. And this pawn is it's going to be very hard for white to protect and will eventually fall. So if black had... That's what he would like to do with the, after the move rook FDA is play this move E5. So, knight D2 was played by uh, Aronian. <clears throat> and now E5 here can be met um, instead of by D5, just simply with knight E4, queen G6, and knight c5 and then b6 has to be played or e takes d4 or something like that okay so this is why wesley didn't play e5 right away so knight d2 so now he plays knight a5 this is a common maneuver also in these similar type positions sometimes you can um, gain a tempi and get this pushing with c5 so the rook behind c8 is not without uh, purpose. Eventually, Black is hoping to be able to play, use this pawn against the center. But first, he has to prepare it with b6, and uh, sometimes it's kind of slow. Queen b4 from Aronian, b6. And now, bishop a6, just annoying, probing the queen side, fighting um, against Black's ideas. So now, rook b8. Knight e4, hitting the queen. Queen f5. So, you can see Aronian is doing, the, you know, just enough to annoy black and keep him from um, coordinating his pieces. And playing, you know, the e5 or c5 breaks. Bishop d3. Bishop c6. And now we see, you know, tactics all in the air. This opposition. Wesley is threatening to win the piece. And there goes the original plan of moving in the center. There's F3. And now here is, um, to me, a suspicious move by Wesley. Um, he just gives up this bishop unprovoked, just as he gave up the first bishop earlier. Um, to me, better is just repositioning this knight. Um, this idea with C5 has been shelved after... Rook b8, and then especially bishop to c7. So this pawn is not going anywhere for a while. So you might as well reposition this knight. So for instance, knight b7. Let's say rook d2. How about knight g3 is a little more realistic. Knight g3 attacking the queen. Queen g5. e4, pushing the center. Knight c5. <clears throat> With the idea of D takes E5 and Queen E3 check. And capturing the bishop. And here black would actually uh, be better after destroying uh, white center. So knight B7 is probably a little bit better uh, there. So here white plays F3. And of course... This plan is, as I showed you, the play moves like knight g3, and then e4. So Wesley plays a bishop takes e4. And f takes e4. Excellent move. Not only strengthens the white center, you know, taking control of more squares, but opens up the uh, f file. Queen g5. Attacking e3. Rook f3, defending but also making an offensive move into uh, <clears throat> black's territory, threatening rook g3 in some cases. c5, finally Wesley gets what he was looking for in the c5 break. However, it's not that effective because white does not have to take. I mean, if he had to take, that would be great for black, but he doesn't have to take. And he has this c pawn. 
and the e-pawn fortifying d4. So c5 is kind of um, useless right at this point. So queen b2. And planning to shift over to the uh, king side. And now Wesley plays e5. Now a lot of amateur players will rush and play the move d5 because they have uh, now have a pass pawn in their possession. But this will fall into the old uh, trap. The Nimzovich uh, was set on his opponents. Um, and Bobanik has done. It's been done many times. It's simply just creating a blockade. That knight on a5 would just go to b7. And then say after rook df1, just knight d6. And um, black is actually A-OK -okay here. This knight is great. Unassailable in this position. And uh, covers um, a lot of squares in the white territory. It shuts this bishop down. Of course, Aronian's too uh, good for that. And just leaves it as it is. <clears throat> Plays rook df1, attacking f7. C takes d4. <clears throat> Another idea is just is rook b7. This could be meant by queen f2. So c takes d4, c takes d4. Now rook b7. And now, <clears throat> now Ronin plays d5. Notice with the rook on b7, now the knight cannot redeploy itself and get into this blockade situation. So rook c7. And maybe he can do it now, right? However, black, uh, white has moves too. He plays h4. Sacrifices the uh, h pawn for the e pawn. Queen takes h4. Queen takes e5. This frees up. The pawn majority in the center of the board. Queen e7. Queen g3. And now here, uh, Wesley makes um, what I look at as a fatal error. It's queen c5. So queen c5 and now rook f6 from Aronian. Threatening rook takes h6. So h5. Rook h6 anyway. Queen c3. Trying to um, defend and attack the bishop here on d3. Rook takes h5. And of course the bishop cannot be taken because the queen would just slide. All, um, I'm sorry. The king. Blah, 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 can't even talk. If queen, if queen takes d3, this rook right here is hanging on c2. But even stronger than that is just queen h4 sliding over and threatening mate and threatening this rook right here. That's what I was trying to say. The king would just slide over, but I couldn't get it out. So rook takes h5 and now g6. And of course, this is not a real threat because um, the rook cannot be captured due to the pin. <coughs> And Aronian just simply played e5 and um, black resigned. The threat here, the main threat here is bishop takes uh, d3. Okay, and then after queen d3, then, <coughs> and, um, just show you. So after queen d3, just real simple. Uh, chess can be played, you can either play queen h4 and win like that, or you can just simply reorganize the pieces, play a move rook h3, and let's say rook d5, and then put the queen in front. There's really nothing to do about this or this. For example, king f8, that's going to lead to mate. Don't be afraid. Sack the rook. Okay. So. Good game by Levon Aronian. And um, not so good game by Wesley. So there. I just want to show you one line. 
it was a critical moment at the end. Um, Ronnie was better here, but Queen C5 kind of sped up the end. Instead of Queen C5, the best defense here was Queen D6. Some of you may have picked that up because you're offering the trade queens here and it prevents this idea because if rook f6 <laughs> you would just you would just take the queen <laughs> so that stops that so all Aronian could do here you know to keep you know the fire burning is play a move like e5 right so e5 queen takes d5 right e6 again now if rook f6 now you could just take queen takes d3 So e6, queen d6, again, can't, still can't take, queen takes d3, e takes f7, king f8, and queen c7. So e6, queen d6, offering the trade of queens again, and now spectacular moves, bishop h7. King takes h7, queen takes, rook takes, and then you go into this end game where black loses the exchange. But as you can see, this is uh, offers up a bit more um, resistance than the actual game uh, continuation. So queen at the queen c5. So that is it for the analysis of that game. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, to sum up, Wesley made basically three suspicious moves that I looked at. One was giving up, basically two of them involved giving up the bishops without any recourse. One was this move. Bishop takes f3. That was on move 19. And then the other one was earlier in the game a move 10 where at the castles he just played bishop takes c3 and then and i think those contributed greatly to uh whites um you know having a better position and finally um he overlooked this rook f6 idea and played uh, queen c5 and that was that was you know too much for the position to um, withstand and then you know Aronian finished it off in a nice tactical tactical manner.